Coming up on Hawk TV, we take a look at a senior in her family-owned art studio, the 2018-2019 Teacher of the Year, and the girls' soccer team nearing playoffs. This is Hawk TV for Wednesday, March 6. Good morning, Hebron High School. I'm Kamira Bell. And I'm Shuri Felna Shukati. After getting into Laguna College of Art and Design, senior Devon Lalonde is set for a career in the arts. Lalonde and her family own a growing painting studio called Design Time in Castle Hills, in part to help pursue her future goals. Haley Pacheco takes a look into her story. Starting in fourth or fifth grade, senior Devon Lalonde discovered her passion for art. Her family opened their own studio in order to keep Lalonde on her future path. Design Time is a studio that hosts kid classes, birthday parties, summer camps, painting and drawing classes, and more. I used to work at an old studio, and when it closed down, our family kind of just decided to start up our own because I knew it was something that I wanted to do in the future. In 2018, Lalonde sent in a painting to the State Fair of Texas. Lalonde's mother, Dana Ginsberg, says this was a turning point for her passion. She had done a, a painting that she submitted to the State Fair of Texas, and it won first place. And I think ever since that happened, she wanted to pursue art more as a career, not just as having fun with it. Ginsburg says her favorite piece her daughter painted was her self-portrait. She did a self-portrait of herself. I'd probably say that that's my favorite. It was very bright, um, a very cool style. With working at the studio part-time, Milan gets the opportunity to work with kids on their art skills, which she says is her favorite part of the job. I like getting to work with all the kids because they're just so sweet and so funny, and it's really fun to see like what they come up with from what you kind of tell them to do, I guess, because they're all creative and kind of weird in their own way. <laughs> Lalonde recently got the news of her acceptance into Laguna School of Art and Design in California. With a growing business and a move to art school, Lalonde shares advice to aspiring artists. It gets really frustrating sometimes when something's not turning out the way you want it to. And I know I, a lot of times, get very frustrated with <laughs> my art but just like never give up on it and just keep trying to fix it until you get it the way you want it to be. Reporting for Hawk TV, I'm Haley Pacheco. Thanks Haley. Lalonde will study art at Laguna next fall. Most humans are so dependent on sight that they can't picture life without it. To see how students do when deprived of one of their senses, we had two students guess what item was placed in a box using only their hands. My name is Natalie Laura and I'm a junior. Hi, I'm Macy Newman and I'm a sophomore. Okay, I've never done this before. You can put your arms in the box. Okay. Do I put it in? <laughs> what is it? <laughs> Wait, is it an orange? Like a cutie? <laughs> Okay, wait, hold on, let me think. Bananas! 
Is it? <laughs> yeah. Is it actually? Yeah. This year, Money Matters and accounting teacher Ellery Smith was awarded the Teacher of the Year. Aiden Heron takes a closer look at what makes Smith stand out. Money Matters and accounting teacher Ellery Smith has been at Hebrew for almost two decades and has been awarded with this year's Teacher of the Year honors. Smith shares how he first felt when he found out he won the award. One, I was just kind of, uh, I was shocked, um, but I was elated at the same time. I mean, it's, I mean, you're kind of weird if you don't, if you don't want somebody to tell you that you're doing a good job or be acknowledged for doing a good job. I think the reason I would use the word shocked is because I think since I teach elective classes and not a class that a student has to take, then maybe I wasn't even eligible for the award. It hasn't been just the students that have gravitated towards Smith, however. Principal Scott Finch and DECA coordinator Julie Seifert explain how important he is to the staff. Well, you hear a lot. Uh, Ellery Smith is a, is a great person. Uh, he's very servant-oriented. He creates great relationships with students. Uh, and he teaches classes that are very relevant to students, uh, specifically Money Matters. You know, it's been great working with Mr. Smith. He is always positive. Um, he can always be counted on to help out when needed. And he's really helped me out a lot with DECA in the last several years, um, whether it's testing or actually traveling with students and helping out with competition. So it's been great. Finch says Smith's upbeat and charismatic attitude helps him stand out amongst the other teachers here at the school. Uh, I really think it's his personality, his character, um, that really students grab onto and, and appreciate in him. Uh, and it's the same thing that with the staff. Uh, those same qualities are very valued by the staff as well. Uh, he's got a great personality. He's always bubbly, positive, upbeat. Uh, quick with a joke, always has a smile on his face. And uh, so, you know, those are just still some more qualities about Mr. Smith that we all appreciate. Smith says he hasn't taken this experience for granted. This is what we're gonna do. I wouldn't take for granted, like, all the students that I've met, the relationships I've built with the students, um, the stories I've got to share with the students, seeing their faces on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, by being a teacher, you are being instrumental in directing the lives of every other profession. Um, I think that's something that just, you know, makes me feel good inside knowing that you've been instrumental in directing a kid and showing them something that um, a lot of people can, you know, they can't really say that they've done something specifically and they can see the result. Reporting for Hawk TV, I'm Aiden Heron. Thanks, Aiden. If you see Mr. Smith around, tell him congratulations. With Winter Guards Regional Competition coming up, the team gets ready for their third straight NTCA title. I take a look at how the team is preparing. The Winter Guard team is looking for their third consecutive regional win this year. Instructor Scott Tuesley says that their focus has been on dancing. Our skills, um, we've been dancing um, and taking a lot of dance classes, and that's improved. Um, a lot, and that's really necessary in Winter Guard. They have to really be able to dance and spin their equipment. For this year's regional, the team has been trying different techniques to have a better performance. Junior Ashton Gary and senior Courtney Burgess say they've adjusted to their new dances and techniques. Well, our show's a lot different than what it normally is this past year because we've added a lot more like tricks that we're used to because we usually do like the basics, but they're like really clean, so we're taking a lot of risks this year to hopefully get that reward factor about it. Uh, Mr. Tuesley came in and he kind of introduced a new technique that we weren't familiar with, and it's just um, different directors have different techniques, and so it was hard to get used to his technique at first. Now in his second year, Burgess says how Tuesley brought a positive mentality to the team. He's like a really great dude and he's really encouraging with us. Like, yeah, he has to be hard on us because he's a coach, but he makes sure that we're, we're capable of doing things and if he needs to fix something, like he'll fix it like right away. Gary and Burgess address the team's weakness and how they can overcome it to win their third straight regional title. Um, we're just really working on growing together as a guard and being a good community because, I mean, with mostly girls, girls just like to fight with each other. We really need to focus because I feel like a lot of us are getting really nervous about it because this is our first time doing WGI and WGI is like a huge 
thing in the color guard world. Reporting for Hawk TV, I'm Sharif on the Shukati. The Winter Guard Regionals start on March 15th and end on the 17th. With almost 4,000 students in grades 9 through 12, students are bound to have many different opinions. We got four students to come together and talk about their opinion on academics in school. I'm Grant Shamblin and I'm in the 12th grade. I'm Crystal Cordero and I'm a senior. I'm Irene Kim and I'm a junior. I'm Michelle and I'm a junior. School just isn't my number one, but it's definitely high up there. Like, I'm very involved in a lot of school-oriented activities, but I definitely put my friendships and my family before school, for sure. My parents are Asian. <laughs> and, like, I know it's kind of, like, stereotypical that, like, they kind of want you to be better. And, like, not only that, but, like, also because, like, they want me to have a good future and like be prepared for it. I definitely think there was a time when there was some pressure from my parents, but now that we're kind of towards the end of my senior year and I've already gotten into college, I my parents are really putting a lot of pressure on me at this point. I mean, it's it's just not always it's not always enjoyable. I mean, a lot of times it is, but not all the time. There's some days where I just don't want to come, but I think the people I surround myself with and the clubs and activities I do definitely help aid the whole process. If you want to do something, Hubert always has an option for you. And I feel like, um, I don't know, like, if I were to, like, really, really want to join, like, a club, like, other schools might not provide as much, like, activities as Hebron provides, and I like that about our school. Thank you to the students who participated in our discussion. The girls' soccer team final district game is on March 22nd, and playoffs will begin shortly after. Melissa Gonzalez takes a closer look at how the team is preparing. With the girls' soccer team nearing the end of district, they're now focusing on playoffs. Senior Brielle D. Haven says that the team's strongest points are their ability to score. We need to keep up um, what we're doing right now, like scoring. We need to get lots of goals early in the first half and make sure that we don't fall apart, like stay, keep the defense strong and just play hard full 80 minutes. Sophomore Matilda Torres says that the team doesn't dwell on their losses and that they need to work on defense. I think we just kind of ignore it and like move past it. And I think we use that to like make us do better in our next games and see what we did wrong and improve off of those things. We need to work on releasing the ball more and um, just attacking and also our defense. Uh, I think we need to hold the line better and stop them from storing goals. DeHaven says that despite their losses, she's hopeful the team does well in playoffs. I'm hopeful that we will do well like, I know we have the losses so far, but that if we can actually play our game, every single game, all 80 minutes, then we should do well. Reporting for Hawk TV, I'm Melissa Gonzalez. Thanks, Melissa. The girls' next game is March 19th at Louisville High School at 7.30. The boys' soccer team is making its way through district season. With its next game against district rival Louisville, Sophia Mahmood takes a look at how the team is progressing. With an up and down season leaving the boys soccer team fighting for the district's final playoff spot, head coach Matthew Zimmerman talks about his plans to finish the district season strong. So far we've been doing alright this season. Um, we've been in a playoff look, uh, spot the entire uh, district season so far. We're currently in fourth place right now and uh, with five games to go. Um, I kind of estimate that if we finish well as far as two, out of, two wins out of the next five games will put us in a pretty good spot. Zimmerman says the biggest challenge for him this season has been finding consistency within the team. I'm just trying to find the right combination of guys or just uh, getting the getting my my starters to kind of play at, the, at their top level all the time. I think that's one of the tougher things about coaching in general is just trying to be able to get individuals to play at their highest level at all times. 
captains Lucas George and Matthew Hoffman say the team is ready to play Louisville in their rivalry game. We know they're going to be a good opponent. We always have uh, good matches between them. Always gets a little dicey here and there, but we're looking forward to a good game. Um, they're always a good opponent. I mean, it's anybody in this district's pretty good. Um, Louisville, we've got a lot of history with them, so it's a good rivalry. So it'll be exciting. Hoffman says he feels confident about playoffs. We're really excited about it. You know, we're not there yet, but we have a few more games to win. Um, I think if we can win like the next two or three, we'll be set before spring break, and we're just really looking forward to it. Zimmerman says he's thankful for the strong qualities his players possess. This team has a certain amount of grit to it as far as being able to kind of pull themselves up, pull together as a group and as a, as a team, as a family kind of thing, and play for each other, fight for the guy next to them, and um, I'm really appreciative of that. Reporting for Hot TV, I'm Sophia Mahmood. Thanks, Sophia. The boys will be playing Louisville at home on March 19th. The game will also be senior night. In other sports news, baseball will compete in the Louisville Hebron Tournament at home Thursday through Saturday. Softball plays at Capel at 7 on Friday. And boys golf will be competing at Tango Ridge Golf Course Friday through Saturday. That's it for today's broadcast. I'm Sharif on the Shukati. And I'm Kamira Bell. Have any story suggestions, email us down below. And follow us on Twitter and Instagram.